All right, hi, I'm Marcus Leto. I'm the uh, creative director and president of V1 Interactive. So Marcus, talk about what you're showing here at PAX, your new game, Disintegration, which you showed at Gamescom first. This is the second time you're showing it. Uh, this is a special time because we're actually having the uh, public hands-on playing the game for the first time. Uh, first time at Gamescom was, was press, that was great. We got a nice warm reception. Um, but now uh, here on the floor we've got a really great booth uh, with Private Division uh, putting a lot of effort into making this, uh, this uh, whole presentation really awesome for us. Talk about your game. This is a very unique experience. It's an arena shooter, but it's also an RTS and a first-person shooter and like a bunch of other stuff. It's weird. We it actually started out as an RTS, 100%, which was weird, but uh, we, we moved it into this first-person shooter realm, uh, putting, uh, turning the, that camera in the sky into an active participant in, in combat. And uh, it turned into something really unique immediately, and uh, it was a really difficult problem for us to solve, like asking the player to play a first-person shooter from that aerial perspective and also uh, command a small squad of units on the ground. Uh, we went back and forth, back and forth through all kinds of uh, gameplay mechanics until we finally kind of landed on something that really clicked. So talk about how like your abilities work because you have basically two weapons on your hover bike. Or what's it called again? The hovercraft, grab cycle, grab cycle. and yeah. then you have two units on the ground that each have a unique ability. Uh, so depending upon which crew you choose in multiplayer, you'll have your grab cycle with a unique loadout. Some of them have. Uh, a weapon and an ability, like a, a, a healing ability for instance, and some of them are uh, special uh, special abilities, like Sideshow is one that has uh, sticky grenades that you can fire out using Y, uh, which is a weapon switch, to detonate them. Um, and some, uh, some crews have more ground units than others. Some have two, some have four, um, and they each have a unique ability uh, on, uh, that you can use uh, tactically in gameplay. Talk about what you learned from your experience on the Halo franchise that you've applied and brought over to Disintegration. I think one of the biggest benefits we have on the in a lot of us who have worked in uh, AAA games, working on uh, franchises uh, like Halo, as well as um, my business partner worked on uh, SOCOM and MAG, it's, it's this uh, uh, ability and knowledge to understand how the dev cycle actually works and, uh, and to kind of like uh, preemptively understand the pitfalls we, uh, a team can run into uh, in the middle of creating uh, something like this. Um, but on the uh, creative side, uh, it's just a lot, of back, uh, a lot of knowledge over at least two decades of making games. Um, um, and knowing, you know, the, the kind of cool things that we can explore, what what's going to cost us more, what's going to cost us less, as far as like the uh, effort uh, when it comes to creative development. So when you the when you co-created the Halo series, Halo was kind of people will argue with me on this, but it was kind of like the first esport. I remember Halo Two tournaments being a big thing back in the heyday. Yeah. When you were designing Disintegration, did esports come to mind for? I mean, obviously it's a highly competitive game. Um, did, did you think about that at all, or? We thought about it for sure, um, but it wasn't our goal. Uh, our goal is really to make a fun multiplayer experience. If it turns into that because the people playing it, our community actually is really uh, really into it and demands that, we built the hooks into it to make that a possibility. Can you talk about the art design in your game because it's very Halo-ish Destiny. <laughs> uh, well, part of that's because that's my style. That's like if you see a movie from a certain director, you're going to expect a certain experience. When it comes to a game directed by myself, uh, that was my that's my thumbprint. That's the kind of uh, game that I that I typically will build uh, with regards to not only the way it plays but the way it looks and feels. Can you talk about uh, this world that we're playing in. Uh, is everybody a machine or a robot? Are there humans? Yeah. So in our universe, uh, all of all of the characters in the game are human. Their brains are inside an armored shell, which is then integrated into a robotic armature. So each one of them have a unique personality. Uh, in the story campaign, you get to know these characters, you get to play alongside them, they play along with you, and they have this really uh, unique um, character banter between them and that kind of thing. In multiplayer, each one of them expresses themselves um, uniquely as far as the way that the crews are themed, the way they look, the way they uh, behave on the battlefield. So what can you tell us about the story in this world? What's going on? Is it, po it looks like a post-apocalyptic world that's been ravaged by war. It's a world that hasn't been completely nuked, so it's not like a brown world uh, kind of a uh, gameplay experience. It's a game where uh, uh, humans have really been dealt a, a pretty difficult hand. 
uh, and they're dealing with a potential extinction uh, event uh, on the horizon. That's why they've taken these drastic measures to integrate themselves into robotics. Um, and as a, as a means of uh, survival, it's a temporary thing. It's meant to be that way. But as soon as that happens, a whole group of them decide to stratify off and become this, um, this organized uh, military kind of organization called the Rayon. And that's our enemy in our game. They have left behind humanity. Whereas we play a group who has broken away and is fighting for whatever we can to save what's left of humanity on Earth. And uh, so our, the, the, the uh, story campaign that we're going to be uh, putting the player through uh, takes you through a variety of different environments, a ton of different enemies to fight, and uh, a lot of different great, great experiences for the player. Can we expect kind of the same overarching story, uh, like something Halo was pretty epic, and we expect that kind of the same story with like the Covenant and the, you know you know certain characters that like you know will last a lifetime. I love the backstory. I started working on the backstory for this game over six years ago, and it's just something that's continued to get deeper and uh, thicker with lore. Uh, is definitely one of the things I love about making games. I think it's one of the things that gives uh, a game a heart and a soul that. Uh, that uh, it wouldn't have otherwise if the story wasn't as rich. We've seen a lot of game cycles. There's always game cycles. You have your first-person shooter, RTS, and they come in cycles. Uh, your game at its core is an arena shooter, and I feel like that genre didn't have time to settle before Battle Royale came in and wiped it all out. Uh, what do you feel are your thoughts about the uh, trends in gaming, and why do you think it's important not to consistently follow them? I think it's, it goes with the ebbs and flows for sure, and, and one of our goals when we started out making Disintegration was to not chase the tail of any other uh, genre or any other uh, fad that was, uh, that's, that was uh, occurring at that time. So we set out to build something totally unique um, and something that we just love playing. And uh, we're hoping, because we love playing it internally, that that, uh, that, that kind of excitement uh, will uh, spread beyond into, some, uh, into our community as well. Now the online multiplayer is 5v5, uh, what was your idea behind that? Uh, would you, will you have smaller matches, bigger matches? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we started off with 3v3, we've tried 2v2, I mean we can accept those kind of games and we, we definitely build uh, multiplayer for that kind of thing. But in 5v5 we found a really good sweet spot where uh, your crew comp uh, with your team, uh, where you, you've got this... Um, you got the ability for some players to, you know, take their time to get a little breather between uh, moments in combat and uh, really coordinate and work more uh, together as a team. So where did the name come from? It's kind of a play on words. Um, on one hand, the simplest form of it is we just love blowing stuff up and having a great time and we like disintegrating literally uh, things in front of us as we play the game. But on the other hand, uh, from a fictional story point, it's about the dismantling of the rayon forces, the integrated, and so we're disintegrating them. So what's it been like being part of Private Division and what have they supplied in terms of support and tech to help make this game a reality? Well, Private Division has been a really great publisher for us because they have not only been able to support us with the financial needs we need in order to build the kind of game we're, we're making, which is not just a teeny little indie game, but it's also not like a, an enormous 600 person team. We're only 30 people, V1's a pretty uh, small team, but it, they've allowed us to you know, like build the team that I have um, that's all a mixture of um, you know, uh, seasoned devs like myself, as well as some emerging talent, um, but also then the freedom to uh, explore the creative ideas and the trust for us to like build this game uh, the way we see fit to make it. What's it been, you've been in the industry for a long time, what's it been like seeing this industry grow and evolve? The tools now are a lot different than they were 15, 16 years ago. Yeah, uh, it, it has gotten way better. And we, uh, yeah, we're uh, licensing and using the UE4 engine, which is, it's a huge help for us. I mean, with, with regards to not having to hire a 60 person engineering team to build an engine from scratch, which takes a long time and is really, really difficult. Uh, we can build on top of this foundation with the Unreal Engine and uh, the iteration of gameplay is key for us to, uh, especially with the kind of game we're making, in order to innovate uh, on the core gameplay mechanics. Uh, if we had to wait even more than 10 seconds to get in and play after we tune some variables, uh, that iteration loop would go away. So that's one of the benefits we have is, uh, in using those uh, new tools available to us. If you had those new tools 15 years ago, do you think the Halo trilogy would have been any different? I don't know. That's a good question. I, uh, I think 
I think we probably would have evolved the franchise a lot faster, uh, for sure. So when does Disintegration come out and what platforms can we play it on? Well, it's going to be coming out sometime in spring next year uh, on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. And because I have to ask, any plans for Nintendo Switch? Mm, can't say anything about that. <laughs>